audience at home. Let's try this again. <coughs> Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone wall that the builders rejected has become the This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us be glorious in And as you heard, turn to number 2109 in the faith we sing, Gail will play through it.
open it up now for uh, sharing of joys and concerns. This is a time in our service where we pray for one another and uh, specifically each other's families and, and uh, whether struggles that we're going through or, or uh, praises or, or joys that we have together that we can share together and, and rejoice in together. Uh, this is what we do at this time. Um, I will say that uh, I was able to meet with Milton John yesterday, and he um, is uh, really struggling, has some infection, has some other things, his platelet counts were back down again yesterday, and, and so he's really uh, needing our prayers, and I encourage you to continue to pray for him throughout the week. Uh, Debbie has been sick too, Debbie Waddle, and, and she's been trying to fill in in the office, and so uh, we need to keep her in prayer as well. Uh, and then also a prayer, uh, uh, we need to keep in prayer um, that position of, of secretary, and so we need to uh, pray for uh, the one who will be uh, coming to fill that position. Sam Salem was buried last this last week uh, in, in Stafford, and we can continue to pray for those families. Um, Rick Hunley, I think, has been gone all week in Guatemala with the Eden Valley Church, and, and so we can pray for those folks as they return home. I think uh, Monday is the day for, for them to return home. Continue to pray for a presidential election and, and our government. Hutchison High School with the threat that they had. What other things can we be praying about this morning and, and uh, both joys and more concerns? Ellen G's brother passed away. I was aware of that, just didn't, didn't remember to get that. <coughs> Uh, Kenny Clark gave me this. Most of you know Tom and Jane Dale. And it says, all just a note to let you know what has been happening with us down here in Texas. Jane has been diagnosed with a severe stenosis in the aortic valve of the heart. The doctor says it is critical in the aorta valve replacement as open heart surgery is required. She will have a heart cath this coming Monday and an ultrasound on the carotid artery on Wednesday. This is determined if the arteries around the heart and the carotid area are clear of obstructions and blockages. When those are done, surgery will be scheduled at the soonest possible date. She is expected to be in the hospital up to a week, and he will provide updates. Please keep Jane in your prayers. Thanks. Tom. Okay. And there's Jane Dale. Dale, D-A-L-E. I would say that's Hazel Jordan's daughter, but that's not going to mean much to you. So. Well, I do remember Hazel, but anyway. Anybody else? Yeah. Don? Arlene and I just went to a funeral of Payola Friday, and we got a call last night. Now her sister is in the hospital, so we can ask prayer for he just buried my cousin. It was a beautiful ceremony. There was over a thousand people in the church. It was great. So Marlene's sister.
restore her to health as well. Um, thank you, Lord, for her willingness to serve in the, in the office to in the past couple of weeks. Lord, we pray, we pray for the family of Helen G. and, and ask that you would provide them comfort as well as the Salem Holy family in their time of loss. Lord, we, uh, we heard the, the uh, report from the Dales, and we ask uh, your ministry of healing in Jane Dale's life, uh, specifically in her part. I pray that you would guide those um, surgeons' hands and those who work on her, that, that, are, that you would give them wisdom to, to bring healing to her body. And then we pray for Marlene Warnke's sister, Lord, that you would um, you would also minister during this difficult time and and, uh, and provide comfort uh, and care for Marlene and Donna's um, as they walk through this with her and the rest of the family. We pray, Lord. Now, as we continue in our time of worship, we uh, we bow, um, asking that you would visit us, that you would send your spirit, fill us anew. Uh, we pray that you would anoint the, the preaching of your word, uh, bless the, the uh, offering that will be given as well, and, uh, and send us out into our, our mission field uh, recharged. Now would you join me uh, in praying as our Lord taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You turn in your hymnals to number 280. All glory, Lord, and honor will see verses 1 and 3. Just say this, 
the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. And they were untying the colt, and the owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they sent Jesus on, sat Jesus on it, and he rode along. People kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he, was, as he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that he had been, say, had been seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. May God add this blessing to the reading of his holy word. I hate to even bring it up. Are you sick of the presidential campaign yet? I admit that my fatigue with the process is rapidly increasing. Um, and each candidate has his or her own uh, set of ideals that they would like to implement in the next administration. Administration, administrative term. Easy for me to say. Each one creates a set of problems for themselves, uh, be it some activity in their life in history, or or uh, some opinion that they mention off the cuff, or some core issue even in their platform. I had a favorite candidate once, and it isn't who you might guess. Uh, was not zeroed in on anyone, particularly at that time. I hadn't been inspired for, for some time by a political uh, figurehead. However, in one of the early debates, someone actually inspired me with their words. Now, most of the speech writers uh, in our day have little imagination. Uh, in fact, if a candidate could hire the people who wrote the monologues for Martin Sheen and the West Wing drama series, that would have, they, they would probably pretty much guarantee their nomination. Pretty inspiring. That's if my opinion about such things matters all that much. Unfortunately, that one person who inspired me has long since dropped out of the race. I have no idealistic expectations of what can become of this election or who our next president might be. I don't think it can get any worse than some presidents we've had in our lifetime. But we've seen some interesting uh, slogans, campaign slogans over the past year. Defeat the Washington machine, unleash the American dream. People over politics. That sounds pretty good. Heal, inspire, revive. From hope to higher ground. We must do right and risk the consequences. A political revolution is coming. We all know this one. Make America great again. Another one, campaigning for America. Another one, new possibilities, real leadership. Here's another one that just wants to be a warlord. Ready to be commander-in-chief on day one. Reigniting the promise of America. A new American century. And my personal favorite, tanned, rested, and ready. That one was just plain weird. 
In many of these campaigns, we see similar promises being made. Bring back strong leadership. Keep America safe from terrorism. Uh, grow the economy. Improve the status of the middle class and so on. Outside of these, we see some pretty drastic platform departures, one from another. But the strongest candidates are the ones who convey that they will be a strong commander-in-chief, one who will take the world leaders, take on the world leaders on the international stage and ensure victory over our enemies around the world. Now, the Jews in Jesus' day were not so different in terms of what they had hoped to see in this king who was prophesied to come. When Jesus came riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, the people were celebrating someone they thought might provide that kind of leadership. Let's summarize the scene on that last Sunday uh, before uh, Resurrection Day. The day we have come to know as Palm Sunday. Luke tells us that Jesus rides into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey's colt. And multiple, multitudes of, of Jews are making their way into Jerusalem to celebrate the annual feast of Passover. The stage is set for this triumphal entry of Jesus. And crowds uh, come out and line the road to welcome Him and, and praise God. And to shout that Jesus is their King. They cheer with excitement and great anticipation. And after years of oppression by the Roman, Roman occupation, they finally have an, a candidate the people can rally around. One who has their best interests in mind. But not everyone is a fan of Jesus. The Pharisees, who hear the crowd shouting uh, the praises of Jesus, approach Jesus to uh, demand that he stop uh, the people from praising him in this way. But Jesus says if they keep quiet, all the stones will cry out. What an odd statement. What kind of per person could make this statement? Who is this King of Glory? It turns out that Jesus is quoting Scripture. Besides the Jews being under the thumb of the Roman government, their own leadership system is also quite corrupt. And so Jesus quotes one of the prophets who once upon a time addressed this exact situation. I read from Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, in the message uh, paraphrase. Who do you think you are? Recklessly grabbing and looting, living it up, acting like king of the mountain, acting above all, above trials and troubles. You've engineered the ruin of your own house. In ruining others, you have ruined yourself. You've undermined your foundations, rotted out your own soil, your own soul. Excuse me. The bricks of your house will speak up and accuse you. The woodwork will step forward with evidence. So what does Jesus mean by quoting the prophet? The people shout, rejoice, and praise God because they hope Jesus will be the king that they have dreamt about and longed for. And one who, under the guidance of, and authority of God, will replace injustice with justice, deceit with truth, treachery with faithfulness in their government. And that's why the people throw their robes on the ground and wave their palm branches in the air. It is their way of welcoming a new leader. And by riding a donkey, he signals that he is a leader of all the people. Not just the rich, not just the poor, but all the people including the religious elite and the political fanatics. Nobody is excluded. So how do you want our government to change? I can share my list with you. 
about what I'd like to see change. If you all had an opportunity to sit down and write out all the things that you would like to see our government doing or not doing, I think we'd have as many different opinions as we have people in the room. So it's with, with that in mind, I am not going to list my preferences personally. Jesus didn't come here to establish any of the things that we might hope to have in America today. In terms of what our government is here for and what it does. Jesus didn't come to establish our ideal of what government is. And as long as human beings are involved, there is no chance that there will be uh, an ideal system on this earth. Camelot wasn't perfect. The Native, Ameri Native American system wasn't perfect. The Puritan experiment wasn't perfect either. There is no perfect socialist or communist system. There is also no perfect republic or democratic free market system. Yet our Constitution is just about as perfect as it could be. I really believe that. The fact is, Jesus didn't come to establish any of these things. Jesus came to establish a kingdom that is not of this world. A kingdom that began with bearing our sins on a torturous cross under the weight of God's terrible wrath. He carried it, the cross, to completion in his death. Then in a moment, the event that provokes or that proves his kingdom has no end, and that his kingdom is an endorsement of Almighty God, and that he put an end to our greatest enemy, which is death. God raised Jesus from the dead that first Easter morning. He reigns today as King of kings and Lord of lords. His kingdom is just, honest, life-giving, peaceful, and merciful. All the things that we would like to see in our government. And Jesus calls all who believe in him to walk as he walked. To live as he lived on earth. That his government would reign inside us. Not something out there. Would you bow with me? Lord, fill us with your spirit so that we may stop trying to conform your kingdom to this world, but rather conform our world to your kingdom way. Amen. As Nate gets ready to head out, we would... Uh, I just want to remind everybody, the Seder meal is this Thursday evening at 6.30, and you don't have to be a member of this church to come. You can even come from Stanford. Yeah. We would, we'll check your passport. <laughs> we'll let you in. Life is good. If you would all now please turn into your bulletin, and we will read together the offering prayer. <laughs> Faithful God, your son Jesus reveals what it means to be a servant leader who trusts you fully. His steadfast obedience to your will cost him dearly. Yet, through his amazing self-sacrifice, you bring healing, hope, and peace. During this week, help us to reflect your great love in Christ. Let our words and actions point to your grace. We present our tithes and offerings through the Prince of Peace. Amen. Mark, could you and Ronnie be uh, ushers for the offering?
We come now to uh, announcements, recognition, and because I might forget if I don't, I see that Marge has a birthday. I know they, I'm sure they had their spring break is this week, so I'm sure they're visiting grandkids now. Cindy's birthday, okay. Uh, no anniversaries here. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries that we have missed? Okay, but well let's sing Happy Birthday to Marge. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday. like they just started, but it's the last London breakfast. No, we don't have it anymore. We don't have it anymore, so it's listed here for no good reason. Okay, you're done with the lead breakfast. Time went even faster than we thought. Uh, however, at 11.30 that day, there will be a dump salad luncheon for the UMW here. Anna, anything you'd like to say about that? Or need to um, just come. Um, Jan's going to do a program for us. Okay. And then 5.30 that evening, the bells will be rehearsing to play on Easter Sunday. And Jan is sort of directing that, right? Sort of. <laughs> okay, or mostly. I, it's, it could be a little bit like birding cats, but I'm sure it's going to be good. And then at 6 o'clock that night, we'll wait till the bells are done, for, although you're probably going to need it. Anyway, we'll set up for the same meal. Helen G. is very graciously... Uh, making sure that we have everything but the lamb and the matzah. So if you'd like to come and help set up with that, it gets done more quickly that way. And then uh, the next evening, Monday, Thursday, the meal will be at 6.30. And we would like to see you all there. And even little kids that are very happy are allowed to be there, right? We especially want them there to outdo the old foginess of some of us. There's a part for the children if we have them. Yes. They get to find things. And uh, and also, the reason I'd like everybody here to be there is Nate was supposed to have done the Thursday evening service in Stafford, and he was able to switch off with somebody in order for him to be able to be here. So he is trying to juggle three chainsaws while they're running to make all this work. So he went to all that trouble. I really hope we can support it. Now, next Friday evening is the uh, St. John Hudson Ministerial Alliance Good Friday service, and that will be at the Peace Church on the back way into, I call it the back way to Sterling, but don't go K-19, go the other way. And it's a pretty little church in the country. And so we would invite everybody to please be there. If you were unable to have your photograph taken, uh, they would still like you to uh, text, email, or deliver a snapshot so that you can be included. And then USD 350, Junior Senior High Community Service Day. And uh, I think they're looking what they're soliciting for people that need things done to have to be helped and they need to know by March 24th, which is pretty quick. That's what, the Thursday? Yes. And so we need, any anybody have anything else they'd like to share about that? You know, young people kind of get a bad rap for not wanting to help. Well, they're there want to help, so we need to make sure they have things to do. And then, next uh, Friday night also is the Easter, the Church Good Friday service at the Stafford UMW. Easter Sunday. Uh, are there any announcements that we, that need to be made that we didn't cover? Okay, again, uh, he, Nate went over those, but just keep in mind everybody that's listed on the back. Jan, uh, how's Jason doing with job search? Well, we're hoping he gets an offer this week. Good. Everybody give prayer for that because he would really like to get working. The same thing with Will. If there is nothing else, 
If you would please stand and turn to hymn number 536, Precious Name. <coughs>